I'm just uh, whizzing through some of the photos I took. Last time I was in uh, Kingsbury Water Park a couple of weeks ago. Um, these are all right, but I'm just looking for something in the um, in the foreground. So I often like to put a path or something just to lead the eye into the painting. Now, there's one up here. The, um, this one. I'm gonna have a go at this one. I think I just like the way the path goes off and just make it a bit more curvy. Um, might just get rid of some of these trees just so that you can see right through. Get rid of the trees in this sort of area, and then just try and create a sort of light down the middle. Just try and make it a bit more interesting. Yeah, got me air, air dryer on the one side, as and when I need it. I got the usual Cutman watercolors. This one's raw sienna, probably the most one I use. All the uh, seven colors there, and there they are on the palette. What I do, I squeeze them out at least the night before so they all could dry and I use them dry always in the same place so you know exactly where they are so these are all bone dry I, can't... Trouble is, I don't I like to use them wet but um you get that used to just whizzing around with the brush you if, it, if all the paint was wet I'd just be picking up paint all over the place and it'd end up being an absolute mess so I tell I like to use them dry so you've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. This is my water jar, it's got a nice sharpish lip on here which takes off a lot of the excess water on the ache brush. And then the rest I can just wipe it on the towel, wipe the brush on the towel and then I've got a, a clean dry brush, you can see a lot of the airs of I've almost got on this one now. I'm gonna to have to get a new brush. Look, I can't even get a straight edge. Look. The other two I use are the three quarter flat and the uh, number three rigger. Piece of card that I scrape out on, and I've always got some tissue in case I want to lift off some colour. I use a piece of um, I think it's nine mil plywood. I lean against the easel. And then just use some clips just to keep the paper on. It's 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper. 130 pound from Art Discount. uk. It works out about 30 per sheet. So a quick look back at the photograph, and then I'll, let's crack on with the painting. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the uh, the big ash brush and just give the paper a good soaking. Basically, I'm I'm pretty stretching the uh, paper is what I'm doing but I'll start painting before it's finished stretching so the easiest way I know of, of creating a nice sort of light effect is to uh, give it a good sew and then go in might first go in with some raw sienna And then clean the brush and then a, a nice sort of dark blue so I'm going ultramarine and Payne's grey mix the two together and then just brush it in decide where you want your light to come so I'm doing somewhere somewhere like that so I'm going to come in and leave that bit down the middle Now you'll need to sort of crack on with this because you need to get it in before the paper dries. So as long as you've wet the paper sufficiently, you'll you'll get a couple of minutes to uh you haven't got to go ultra mad but you'll have to get your skates on a little bit. So just brush that in from the sides. Remember to just purse preserving that light bit down the middle and then same colours, same sky colours and we'll put in the uh, we'll put in those distant trees and pull down some reflections while I'm at it. I can't actually see the reflections in the uh, in the picture but it doesn't do any harm to stick some in. Just 
don't want to vary the colours as I go along. Now there's the distant trees. Now paper's stretched now, so I could have done that and waited for it to stretch and then started painting, but why wait? I'd like to just get on with it myself. So looking at the uh, looking at the photo now, if I, I think what I might do is give it a quick dry. We've got the background in now, so we can relax a bit now. As the, the rush is over. It doesn't have to be bone dried as long as it's sufficiently dried so that you get a, you can see the contrast now when I, there's a hair there but I am going to wait until that's bone dry before I start messing about touching the paper like I said I want it sufficiently dry so that it the foreground looks a lot more distinct than the background the background's got all these soft edges and uh, see because I put it on while the paper was still wet you've got the soft edges as soon as it starts to dry that's when you have to stop because otherwise you lose all the uh, the soft and it being, turns hard and it looks uh, just doesn't look as nice so first thing I'm going to do with these distant the uh, these trees in the middle so I'm just gonna, you can use a rigger if you like, but I like to just still stick with the hake and then put the, um, now if you imagine the, I don't want to paint over that, all of it, because I quite like that effect on the uh, on the water. Um, in fact, I'll tell you what, I'll put the path in first, because then I know where I'm going. So for the path, I generally, yeah, I don't know why, but light red and ultramarine always seems to make a nice path colour. For some reason, so generally now, so the path's going to start about like that, and then sort of come round and go around like that. That'll do for the path. And then around there, I might just hang on, just dry the brush if it's too wet. Now there's some bushes going to go up there. I'm just putting this landing around the path. So yeah, sure. I'm going to have to go over some of that. Uh, some of that lighter area. I'm trying to vary the colours on coming down. And if I just get nice and dark by the path, I can then really emphasise it with the uh, just a little piece of card. Anything, this is like a corner of like a little credit card or something. And then just Putting in some little rocks just to emphasize that will do it just brings the the, uh, the path out a little bit more but I'll just stick a few a few more down here. So now I've got that in, I know where I'm going now, so first I'll put those trees in, so I'm just going, I just want a dark colour, so I'm going burnt umber, ultramarine, quite a bit of, for quite a wet brush now, so I want everything together, I want all the hairs together, and then there are, I mean there's, there's about a dozen trees there, but I'm only going to put two or three in. 